Welcome to Positive Kids Podcast, dedicated to developing resilient minds, with your host, Chanel Arterbridge. Hello, welcome to Positive Kid Podcast. It's Chanel again, your host for the podcast today. This week, I just wanted to dive a little deeper into adverse childhood experience survey that I introduced to you last week. So if you haven't had a chance to hear uh, my vision for the podcast and also how this all came to be, Positive Kids, please don't hesitate to refer back to episode one. This is our second episode and it's is a weekly podcast. And just to try to, within my short amount of time with you today, this week, be most impactful. That's my goal, to be most impactful to you. We have busy lives. And so let me try to give you as much value as I can, because we don't all have time to read articles and read books. So I'm going to try to be your cliff notes to the ACES study, which stands for Adverse Childhood Experiences Study. Okay. So actually, this study is an old study. It was conducted back in 1995. It was conducted in California. Since this, uh, many other states have had their own studies done. But the original study was done in California. And this study was done with the Center of Disease Control, along with a major health provider in the state of California, known as Kaiser Permanente, okay? So these two organizations came together to conduct this study that actually included 17,000 participants. Now, when it comes to the demographics, what were what did the sample of the population look like? It was 70% white. It was over 50% female. Over 70% had some type of college education. So it really wasn't a diverse sample of American population here. So that is why since then other states have conducted their own to try to get a more a closer picture, a closer resemblance of the American population. However, doesn't matter the demographic. What was found even this in this sample of college educated predominantly white sample here where in mostly women over 67% of the sample had at least one documented adverse childhood experience so this is something that is impactful to all social economic classes that's one thing you can derive from the study that was done originally and that is this is not just held to a certain social economic class. It's not just held to a certain race. It is a public health issue or crisis. It affects everyone, okay? So more than likely, you know someone that has at least one adverse childhood experience. And if you would like to know what these ACEs are, if you go to positivekp.com, which is my website, you can take the ACE quiz. That is something where it's a questionnaire. It's the same questionnaire that was given to the 17,000 participants back in 1995. And it consists of 10 questions, which hit on certain traumas or adversities you may experience prior to the age of 18. So that's pretty much what the study was. It was, can you please fill out this questionnaire and let us analyze and observe your health throughout the years. So we'll check up on you periodically and see how your health is going. And so that is something that the study did. A very simple questionnaire, observe, check in with us periodically, and we'll be following you along to see how, uh, you know, your health, health outcomes in your adulthood. So with these 10 questions that hit on certain things such as neglect, abuse, financial challenges, household challenges, these 10 questions, believe me, there's a lot more adversities we could probably think of, but this was all they had. And so at the time, they decided to focus on these 10 questions. You answer these questions, it takes you two minutes or less, and basically you get a score. For every yes that you put on the form, that's a point. And so... What the observers found from the study is that the higher the score was, the higher the risk 
of getting negative health outcomes in adulthood. So what transpired in your childhood, okay, prior to 18, there's a relationship with that based on some negative health outcomes you may have, okay? And I'll just reiterate some of them. I did go into detail a little bit more in episode one, but just to reiterate, uh, these have to do with COPD, cancer, stroke, heart disease, depression, suicide attempts, drug abuse. These are things you may be more prone to. You're at a higher risk when your score is higher, four or higher. So if you have a score of four or more, then your risk increases when it comes to some negative health outcomes. And that is the relationship that was uncovered with this ACEs study. So here we are more than 20 years later. How come this is not a public health concern? It seems so easy. Uh, Why is it not more uh, readily used in pediatrician offices or uh, when we go to our therapist and we sit down with our therapist? um, Why is this form not, not used? Well, now, and I'm part of the campaign, and I thank you for listening, and hopefully when you hear me more and more, you will become part of the campaign as well of building the awareness of this. So a lot of health and the way we treat, especially our children, can be remedied by maybe getting to the root causes of some of the behaviors we have in our children, we see exemplified with our children, and also uh, maybe we can get an explanation as to why we may act a certain way in our adulthood. There's so much empowerment that the ACEs study can give us by giving us answers of why we are the way we are, and also empowering us to be better caretakers and, and parents and educators for our youth. Because we can now, this gives us a tool to look out to see any alarming triggers or any alarming behaviors and kind of dig deeper uh, with the subject matter. So when it comes to ACEs, I'm passionate about it because now, I mean, of course, I'm a mother. And once I was exposed to this, I just, I just want to share it with as many parents that I can so that they can also give their children a chance to not be exposed to ACEs, okay? And if they are exposed to ACEs, to help remedy the effects of the ACEs. So ACEs causes, and I'm going to keep using ACEs interchangeably, I'm sorry, but that does stand for Adverse Childhood Experiences. It affects more than 34.8 million people, children specifically in our country uh, or across the world. And it doesn't matter what social economic class you're in, but we do know that the more ACEs you have, you have negative health outcomes, but in our children, it also puts them at a higher risk for certain health and behavioral and learning problems. So we definitely want to really uh, use this information to try to better assess our children with this tool. So now that we have this and we can quickly you know, go to the website and take the test ourselves, and as adults, we will uncover okay, what our score is, but Positive Kids is also on a mission to, okay, now we have this for ourselves, let's go ahead and apply this to our children and how can we prevent or reduce the effects of this. And these ACEs cause toxic stress. That's really what it is. It causes toxic stress. So there is a time we need to develop in our childhood is a prime time. We have a lot going on. We're uh, our muscles. We're going through puberty. Uh, we have our, our muscles expanding and we have different physical changes happening. We also have mental changes happening, brain development happening. Our immune system are, is developing. This is a time where we must alleviate as much stress as possible so that we can have the optimal way of growing. Okay. And so we want to give ourselves the best chance possible. And that includes so many things such as we want to make sure our children have adequate sleep. We want to make sure that we have good nutrition and that we exercise and we, you know, definitely taking care of our mental health and making sure we have good, stable, healthy relationships around us. And also we want to practice mindfulness. Okay. And that is something that I am a champion of because that is the tool that I've been focused on the most with my children 
is mindfulness. So toxic stress, toxic stress is the culprit here. And the study has found that when you have a high ACE score, you've been exposed to an absorbent amount of stress in your childhood. And so the abuse you may experience, the neglect, any domestic violence, any parent that was exposed to a mental illness or substance abuse, that all can cause undue uh, stress to the child and affects their brain development. It can contrain, it can also, sorry, change the child's hormonal systems and immune system. And it's so many things that happen internally when you grow up in a environment like that. And so it plays out into behavioral problems and learning difficulties and even may physical health issues. It has been shown that sometimes extreme traumas experienced in childhood can actually affect how a child grows in regards to their height. So it is well documented in many cases where when you go to the pediatrician, I look at that whole growth scale and measurements so differently because there is a method there, not only uh, to see if you're healthy, but it also is a trigger to the pediatrician to see, okay, if you're not on board or you're not growing in a certain amount in the percentage groups, then they may ask you other questions as to how is the environment at home, because that is a trigger, that is a, a symptom of abuse or trauma that the child may be experiencing if they are off the growth charts there. So toxic stress is the culprit and it leads to chronic disease if it's untreated. And so the more ACEs a child is exposed to, the higher the risk they have of developing a chronic illness. And so please don't be alarmed. If you have ACEs, um, I personally am four or higher. I have four. And now I know that Yes, I have been exposed to toxic stress prior to the age of 18, but I can use this tool and the toxic stress toolkit in regards to how to mitigate the effects of it in my adulthood. So please don't hesitate. There's a link and we will definitely include that uh, with this podcast so that you can go to the website very quickly take the test and find out your score. Okay. Now the original study had 10 questions. And now that we're more people are exposed to it, there is more information readily available. And so, for example, I have kind of hitched my wagon to Dr. Nadine Burke Harris. Okay. I definitely encourage you to Google her again. It's Dr. Nadine Burke Harris. She has a wonderful TED Talk on YouTube that's had over millions and millions of views. I encourage you to take a listen. She explains it in a nutshell, what ACEs are. So just wanted to share that with you as well. And so she took the ACEs test, the ACEs survey, the original one, and she expanded the survey. She is an author. She's a pediatrician. She's also the first Surgeon General of California, but she has a clinic and she has taken it a step further to expand the questions because she finds that there are more adversities that a child can be exposed to prior to the age of 18 that can cause toxic stress. And those also kind of have been in alignment of what I'm trying to prepare my children for. Okay. So they include, for example, community violence. See, that wasn't on the original test. It includes bullying, a child being exposed to bullying, discrimination that also was not included on the original survey, parent being deported, a death in the family, a death of a parent or caregiver, These are things that also can cause toxic stress. And so she has deemed them expanded ACEs survey. So not only does she have the original 10, but she also included those. And so I always knew that, you know, for example, I I hone in on the bullying and the discrimination. The whole point of me developing positive kids is to definitely build the mindset of my boys. So to be resilient and strong and to have the high self-esteem. But it also was there 
I was trying to understand how and why did I want to do that for them. And that's because I wanted to give them a tool. Now, now I can articulate that. And that is I wanted to give my boys a tool on how to overcome those adversities. Okay, how you overcome and how you can be resilient when you go to school and another child is picking on you um, and bullying you. How can we kind of see that differently and redirect those negative thoughts and so on? And then when it comes to discrimination, of course, this is something that plays in the back of a lot of African-American families. Of course, we deem it, I'll put in my air quotes right now, the talk. Of course, we want to prepare our children for what they will be exposed to as they grow into adulthood and are on their own. And so how the world will see them. And so that is stress. Okay. And I always knew it was. And now it is just great to have that backed up by Dr. Nadine Burke Harris that, yes, it is true that community violence If you live in a city that's plagued with violence, that can cause you toxic stress, the bullying. If you have someone very close to you, a caregiver that died, you know, all these things that were not included in the first, they can cause toxic stress. So how do you, as a parent, help with that? Okay. And I can just say what I am doing for my children. I do take into the account the toxic stress toolkit that has the six elements that, again, I'll just reiterate again, you want to get adequate sleep and you want the nutrients, uh, nutrition and the good nutrition, and you want to have adequate exercise. Um, also, the mindfulness trainings and the healthy relationships and the mental health care, all of that goes into it. So we here at Positive Kids are really focused on The mindfulness component, we feel that it is neglected. A lot of the times uh, people may think it's corny or people think that, okay, it's not something that can be measured. But I will tell you, it is something that I can readily observe within my own children and not saying that they will not go through struggles, but it's how they deal with them. You know, my children have been exposed to bullying at school or being made fun of or changing schools when they've built friends in an old school and they're a little hesitant and scared and have anxiety of starting a new school year. And also when it comes to just dealing with certain growth and development within and understanding your own self and the confidence that my children have, it's just shocking. And my husband and I, we attribute that to the practicing of just always giving them positive feedback, creating routines for them, and the practicing of positive affirmations, okay? I mean, my son, since the age of three, has known this. I've consistently been doing this with my son, where I take every opportunity to try to build him up and just always giving him positive feedback. And positive feedback doesn't necessarily just have to be, you know, you can do it, son, and, you know, there's nothing, you, you're good at anything. And no, it's really of just res- listening to them and respecting them as, and also trying to learn, trying to teach them in every possible way um, a life lesson from something they're going through and, and understanding that they will get through it. Um, they were built to be overcomers and just always trying to drop those tokens with them. So that when they are older, they can replay some of those mantras. They become mantras for them from what their mother and father has told them about them. So you you always need someone to kind of coach you along. So that's as parents, I like to say we are coaches. I know I became exposed to personal development in my latter years. I would say maybe the last 10, 10 years I've been doing personal development. I just imagine what you could do. If you had personal development at the age of five, (laughs) it doesn't mean you have to wait until you get older to listen to an Eric Thomas or a Tony Robbins or, you know, anyone less brown. It doesn't matter. You don't have to wait until you're older. You can start those things with your children now because they do need to have that unstoppable mindset. Okay, but when it comes to ACEs. That's why I keep mentioning kids and have named this the Positive Kids Podcast because early intervention is the key. 
So yes, we want to take the survey and want to screen for the ACEs in our children as early as possible. And so that we can provide our children with the support they need in order to prevent the future harm that may be caused by the toxic stress. So if you would like to know more about the ACEs, I definitely go to positivekp.com and check out our website. And then you'll hear a little bit more about the resources that we have in regards to how to get started with doing positive affirmations with your children. You just want to keep it simple and you want to start early and you want to make it a routine. Okay. Those are my definitely good tips I would give you for any parent. And, you know, if you just hang in there with me week by week, we'll just keep going through the best tips on how to help our children deal with stress. We don't want to get it to toxic stress, but we want to help them deal with stress so they can be resilient and be overcomers. So hopefully in this podcast episode, you were, you learned something and you were impacted and definitely encourage you to spread the word and join me next week. Have a good day. Thanks for listening to Positive Kids Podcast. For more information, visit our website at www.positivekp.com. 